Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm back again. I'm an MRI radiographer, and today we're going to talk about a routinely knee examination where I'm using dot engine for other positioning and planning. Uh, the protocol I'm going to set up is a 2D versus a 3D, and later I'm also going to show the results of the protocol. Stay tuned. So guys, this is my setup for the knee dot engine. It's uh, both uh, 2D and 3D. My 2D is set up with a PD fat set in different planes. So this varies from side to side. And the 3D is a PD fat set and a PD without fat set on one plane. So now I open the corridor plane, you can see there's uh, three images. I can choose what image, images I want just to make it easier for the radiographers. So the local is, uh, is up now. You can see the three different planes. It's all the positioning. All I got to do is check uh, the, the corner positioning as I want before I do apply. So I'm just going to check it, do a little bit of adjustment before I apply. For the corner plane, I can uh, copy it, the slice positioning, just apply. For sagittal, you see this auto positioning. I'm just gonna do a check before I apply. For transversals as well, check and apply. I see this extremely fast auto positioning, so this will be extremely efficient, uh, constant, and um, fast. So, guys, let's check the 2D results. You have a coronal with that fat set, PD coronal with fat set, sagittal with fat set, and in the end, transversal with fat set. So let's scroll through the coronal images. See this meniscus right there? The image is not that bad for being uh, short scan time. And then we go through the sagittal. You have the ACN right there. Now let's check the transversal. So before we go on on the 3D images, um, 3D is not all, it's been there for years, but it's been very difficult to have it in the protocol because of the long scan time. But the new approach now is uh, uh, making it faster and more efficient. Uh, for instance, I'm gonna show you uh, the Kuiperinia approach. It's not the Kuiperinia Brazilian drink, even though the Brazilian drink is good. This is the Prowl Imaging Kuiperinia from Siemens. Uh, there is also new approaches from different vendors, such as uh, Compress Sensing, uh, Hypersense from GE, Compress Sensing from Philips. Siemens has also Compress Sensing, but as today, there's a little bit restricted to different sequences. And also, I believe in the near future, there will be Compress Sensing for a lot of things. Compress sensing in the is the future. Uh, it's for speeding up the images, examination, and really have good image quality. So please follow and check it out. So this is my 3D setup. I have a localizer setting up with a PD facet sagittal, and then a PD sagittal, and then amplifier planning. Let's pull the sequences over. Let's open it and see the automatically align the position for me. I just have to do some small adjustment before I hit the apply button. And then the PD sagittal automatically copying the slice positioning to the first sagittal. The MPR planning is automatically um, doing a reconstruction for me as I planned. So I have made that transversal. With a fixed field of view, I can decide that, and then the slice thickness, the distance vector, and then slices. So it goes for the coral, I have the same option there. I can do the line positioning right there, and then I hit the apply button. And whenever the first 3D is finished, it automatically do the reconstruction for me. It's a lot of time savings, so it's fast and efficient. So guys, this is the results of the 3D scanning protocol. I check the results. Upper row is a PD sagittal fat set. Lower row is the same with the fat set. I check the sagittal plane. 
you see meniscus comes clearly nice there we have the ACL and then you have the PCL check the coronal images check the transversal So it's not that bad for being a reconstruction. In my opinion, it's both pro and cons having 3D images. Uh, the pro would be that I guess you have the opportunity to do the reconstruction in all the planes. You can do further reconstructions as you want. And one of the cons would be there would be a little bit slight different looking at a 3D compared to a 2D. I guess the radiologist are used to looking at the 2D through the ears. And now the 3D will be a little bit different. But I guess that's something you just need to get used to if you want to use the 3D. Even though the reconstruction is not that bad compared to the quiet plane, which is in, the case, in this case sagittal. Also, there will be more images to look through when you're looking at 3D compared to a 2D. A standard 2D for one slide, one sequence would be around 20 to 30 slices, but for the 3D would be over 100 slices, so it's different there. And also I think there will be more taking sp space of a storage when it comes to the packs when you have 3D as well. So this is something you need to think about when, whenever if you want to use the 3D sequences. So this is one of many papers which uh, John Fritz uh, and his team from John Hopkins in testing out the Kuiperinia uh, 3D versus the 2D to Spinecco. It's a high recommended uh, paper to read if you want to understand more about this approach. The link uh, in this description down below so you guys can check it out for further reading. So this is another paper from Jan Fritz and his team from uh, John Hopkins University. Uh, this paper was published in the Marathon Flash 69 in 2017. Uh, I will also put the link uh, in the description down below along with the link for downloading the, 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 the protocol and the XR file for free. So you can test this out on different scanners. So this is the end of my video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, comment and like my video. See you next time. Stay tuned and thank you very much.